guys have been up to? Definitely. Uh, I see we arrived on um, Christmas. It was our travel day. Um, you know, we, we spent, uh, I'd say, about eight practices in College Station, and we arrived here. We've been treating it like a full game week. Uh, we started off with a Monday practice on um, the 26th. We've gone with a Monday, Tuesday. See, it's kind of funny because today's Sunday, but we're treating it like a Thursday right now. But um, we got a, a tough task ahead. You know, Duke's a very good opponent. Um, I don't care what league you're, you're in. If, if it's a team that can win 10 games, that's, that's pretty tough to do. And uh, at one point, they're one of the hottest teams in the country with an eight-game win streak. Uh, defensively, uh, they're a very well-coached team. They're very sound. They don't give up very many points. Uh, they play very hard. They, uh, they have three guys that have over 100-plus tackles, which um, you don't see that very often. And um, I think they do a great job at getting their best players involved with the game plan. And uh, we have a very tough task ahead. But uh, I think we're, we're very excited to get to, get to Tuesday and uh, lead into the New Year's, hopefully with a victory. All right. Uh, Coach Snyder, talk about your experience in bowl week so far and maybe how, how this experience is compared to others you guys I'll tell had. you what's been a great week. Um, <clears throat> Chick-fil-A has done a great job, kept us busy. Uh, I think the kids are having fun and excited to go play. All right. Outstanding. Uh, all right. For the players, Johnny, we'll start with you. What's, uh, what's been your favorite bowl week event so far and, and how good a time are you guys having? Yeah, I think we had a good time uh, the other night with, with both teams being the the Madden Challenge, getting to watch um, one of our best Madden players on the team go against theirs. And it was, it was a good game. Uh, down to the end, everybody was pretty excited about it. So we've had a good, uh, had a good event to do uh, with, the, with the bowl um, every night. Um, I'm looking forward to another one, getting to drive some go-karts and have some fun again tonight. All right. Uh, DeShazer, what's been your favorite event so far? Uh, I definitely enjoyed watching Johnny blow that layup the other night. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you know, uh, I thought we were going to make it all the way to the questions <laughs> until that came up. <laughs> no, nah, um, I've had a good time at all the events. You know, uh, the shake making that was that was something to watch. You know, our players making shakes, and uh, the the man game was exciting all the way to the end. You know, it came down to the end. Uh, and, you know, this is a, probably the only place you get Chick Fil A on a Sunday, so that's exciting too. <laughs> <laughs> all right, good enough. Well, with that, we'll go ahead and open it up for questions. Again, raise your hand. We'll get you a wireless microphone, and we'll get as many as we can in until the time is up. Who's going to be first? Anybody? All right, right here in the middle. Jake, could you tell us a little bit of what we might see different on offense than we've seen in the past? You know, uh, there, there's not going to be much difference out there. Um, I, I believe that we might play at a faster, faster pace uh, just due to the communication of uh, cutting out a middleman from going from the press box to me out to Johnny, which uh, now it's just a direct communication from me to Johnny. Um, you know, uh, it, it's mainly uh, we're just going to try to get a lot of players involved, in, um, and we're just going to have to find out early in the game uh, who's, gonna, who's, who's hot and who's playing well, and we're going to try to distribute the ball to them as much as we possibly can. But I, I wouldn't see too many changes. All right, we're going we're to go here in the back. <coughs> Johnny, do you feel like things will change now that you'll have Coach Spab calling the plays directly to you and being on the sideline? Yeah, just like you said, um, I think it'll just come in quicker. Hopefully, you can get in more of a rhythm. I mean, that's what we have to do if we want to win this game. Uh, just complete some passes early, get some things rolling, and, and get our tempo up where we want to. So I think coming in directly from the sideline will speed that up a little bit. OK, right here in the middle. Jamie, right here in the second row. Johnny, I know you're here thinking about the bowl game, but where are you in terms of looking into the NFL decision? Who have you talked to? Where, where are you in that process? No, nowhere even close. It's kind of where I was back, uh, back in New York, back in, back in Orlando. So haven't had any, any more time uh, with the bowl practice that we had in College Station to really, to really get a chance to do much. You did put your name in for, to get the NFL feedback, correct? Did. Where are we going? All right, right here in third row, left. Hi, Mark. Uh, what kind of uh, impact or uh, issues do you think you might have without Darian uh, in the lineup? Well, you know, I think that Jordan's had a really good two weeks of practice. You know, he's been playing Mike Force backing up Darian anyway. Uh, his reps have increased over the last three games, and uh, I know the kid's looking forward to it. He's excited. Uh, it'll be exciting to see what he can do. You know, we were going to make this move in the spring anyway. So this is going to give him a, a um, fresh
first chance to get a start in a big stage, and we'll know a lot more after we play. Okay. John, I've been curious, going back to your redshirt freshman year, because you were excelling so much in the drills and things like that, did you and Coach Sherman ever discuss you playing, I mean, not necessarily taking playing time from Ryan Tannehill, but playing maybe some other position in, in, instead of redshirting? Yeah, uh, back in my red shirt, I think Coach Rossley, the main thing with him was, he, I mean, he wanted, we, he, Tannehill was there, he was a starter, um, but he, he always kept telling me, no, no matter what game it was or how far we were in the season, just continue to be ready, continue to, to practice like you're going to be playing on Saturday. So um, I didn't really know um, if there would be another position or um, really how that was going to work, but they continued to tell me to, to be ready in case anything were to happen or um, if something came up. Okay, right here in the middle, Dan. Johnny, if you did come back next year, wh what do you think you could accomplish that you haven't already accomplished at the college level? Well, there's, there's a lot of team things that we haven't done yet. I mean, we, we finished third and fourth in the SEC West, which is something that we'd like to improve on, um, get to a SEC championship game, get to a national championship game. Um, I mean, obviously sitting here right now, that's a, it's a long time away. Um, but there's plenty still left to be done. Um, I, don't, I don't think I just came into college in two years and just did everything you could and, and um, don't have anything left to accomplish. So uh, I think there's plenty out there. All right, back here on the right. Uh, this is for Mark. Duke's running game has, has improved dramatically over the last two or three years. What's your thought about their, their rushing talent, looking at them on film? Consistency. I mean, yeah. those, that offensive line's had a lot of starts together. I mean, those kids have played a lot of football together. And I think that makes the engine go, is that front playing together you can see it on film. I mean, the kids are really gelling. Played a lot of games, started a lot of games. So I think that's the way you've seen an improvement in the running game. And, you know, I think their, their staff has committed to running the ball more as well. And they're going to be playing without their leading rusher, Jalei Duncan, who was uh -huh. suspended from school. So how, how do you think that will impact maybe the way you prepare? Well, you know, again, it's more about their offensive line. You know, they lost an offensive lineman as well uh, in the Florida State game. So uh, to me, they've got three, two now really good running backs. But it's the offensive line that makes that thing go. Okay, right here. Uh, yeah, Jake, uh, this is for you. Uh, was the tempo a problem this season? If you, I mean, since you're on the sidelines, you've been talking about how that's going to improve. But if, if that was an issue, if, if it's going to improve that much, maybe why wasn't the move made earlier to either have the plays coming from the sideline? You know, I wouldn't say it was that huge of an issue. A lot of it has just to do with the getting in a rhythm of things. And, uh, you know, just from the past coordinators that I've worked with, with Dana Holgerson and Cliff Kingsbury, that's directly came – from them to the play caller, with the quarterback. I mean, and um, you know, and it's all about developing a rhythm. And you know, it's uh, you know, they, I it, it was really up to coach someone. You know, I, I really don't know about and deal with personnel and staff changes. That's that's completely up to him. And you know, he he decided to make the change, and we've moved forward in that direction. And you know, we're trying to go, go in versus Duke and and get a great rhythm established and and mix it all up and see what happens from there. All right, back here in the back. The Shazer, what have you seen from the Duke offense, the challenges they will present you guys? Uh, they, they have a very good offense, and, you know, we have to stop both the run and the pass because they have some good receivers. <coughs> you know, they, they go to their number three receiver and uh, their tight end. So we're going to have, have a good challenge on our hands with that. All right, Bruce. DeShazer, you've been around Johnny for a while, and you go up against him every day in practice. What kind of leader and what kind of presence does he have within within the team? Uh, he won't quit, and he'll go at you. You know, he's not afraid to go up against anybody. You know, and regardless how many plays the defense made that day, if he feel like he can make a play against you, he's gonna make that play happen. He's gonna give it his best. He's gonna give it his all. And he won't back down from anybody. All right, right here on the left. Shazer, what have you seen specifically from Jamison Crowder on tape, and how does he compare to some of the best uh, receivers that you faced in the SEC? Uh, he has good speed, good routes, and you know he goes up and competes for the ball. And he's he's a good receiver. So I mean, like I can't take anything away from him just because of the conference that they're playing in. But it's it's going to be a big challenge for us, and we're just going to have to go out and play him just like we play every other receiver. Right here in the second row. <coughs> T. 
Johnny, this may sound kind of like a simplistic uh, question, but with all the eyes on you and all pressure on you, have you been able to enjoy yourself this season and what kind of stands out to you when you think about this year? I think I've absolutely been able to enjoy myself. I mean, uh, I've had a great time in College Station uh, just this year. Um, I've had a great group of friends, great group of teammates that have been um, around me since things kind of changed back in August. Um, but, but life's been good. I've been able to enjoy um, things in College Station. It's really mellowed out a lot, able to go more places and, and do more things now, and, and people are, uh, are accustomed to me being around and, and being out in the public. So um, it really has been a great year. I've enjoyed every second of it. Johnny, Coach Sullivan mentioned about you being beat up a little bit at the end of the season. Much has been written about your thumb, your shoulder. Can you tell us where, where you're at and how much that maybe did hamper you at the end of the season? Yeah, I, f I feel really good today. I mean, I wish the game was tonight. Um, I'm, I'm really tired of having to sit here and kind of continue to practice and continue to wait for the game. I mean, there's, I think we're ready to, to get back on the field. I think we're eager to, to play. So um, I was a little banged up. Uh, the thumb is feeling extremely well, um, as well as really everything else. So um, I feel like I'm, I'm healthy and, and ready to play in the bowl game. All right, all the way in back. Johnny, can you uh, compare Duke's defense to what you've seen on tape so far to you know some of those tough defenses that you've had to see in the SEC, what type of challenges they'll bring to you Tuesday night? I think the biggest thing about Duke is, is they have a lot of fire. They, they, they swarm to the ball, um, and they play good as a unit. So um, it, you can't, it's hard to kind of compare um, who they would be like in the, in the SEC, um, but you look at what they did at the beginning of the Florida State game, they really um, slowed that, that high-powered offense down. Um, and I think they play hard more than anything, and they play they play together as a unit. All right, right here in the middle. Uh, Coach Snyder, uh, during the Missouri game, we saw a lot of progress on the defense. We thought that was a pretty good defensive game. Uh, mm -hmm. We noticed a lot of a younger defensive yeah. lineman in the game, yes. like Jay Arnold, who had a really good game. Can we expect more of that in this game? Yes, yes, you will, yeah. Yes. Okay, right here in the middle again. Jay, could you talk about your mentors or who you're going to draw on when you become an offensive coordinator? You're making the calls. Who who, who influenced your 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 system or what you're going to go do? You know, there's a, a lot to that. Um, you know, I, I have I've had the opportunity to work with Gus Malzahn and Dana Holgerson and Cliff Kingsbury and. Uh, a lot of that has to do with uh, the type of uh, quarterback that you have. Um, if you look at the past quarterbacks I've had with Johnny and, and Brandon Whedon and Geno Smith and Case Keenum, they're all exceptional quarterbacks, and, but you, you run the offense all differently with them. And, and that's part of just uh, you know sitting down next year uh, in the spring and figuring out what type of personnel we have, and, uh, and that's the direction that it's going to go from. But uh, I'd say I'd probably uh, the, the biggest influence is um, offensively for me have been Cliff Kingsbury and Dana Holgerson. Okay, right here in the middle. Johnny, Duke's a team that surprised a lot of people across the country this year. If somebody had told you back in August before the season started that you'd be playing Duke in your bowl game, what would you have said to them? Uh, I mean, you know, I think they've done a great job of, of getting to where they were. Um, and like Coach Spaff said, they were one of the hottest teams in the country at, at one point in time. And you have to, to look and really give them credit for what they've done this year. So um, I don't think I would have expected it. Um, but uh, we really wish we would. We, th we thought we'd be in a, in a BCS bowl, maybe a national championship, but um, things went how they did, and, and we're very, very happy to be here and looking forward to playing Duke. All right, over here on the left, Coach Schneider. The beginning at, uh, at the beginning of the season, the suspensions early were on defense. Darian has his troubles lately. How disappointing is that for you? And, and kind of what do you do moving forward in terms of I, I don't know if the word is tightening the screws or, or what have you in terms of your defenders. Well, I mean, it's a, it's a learning process. You know, we're dealing with 18, 19, 20-year-old kids, and, and, and you go through a maturation process. And, and, and as kids go through that maturation process, at times, they got to learn some tough lessons, and you got to give them some tough love. So, you know, it's kind of like raising your children, and that's kind of the way we approach it. All right, let's go right here in the front. Jamie, front row. This one's for Coach Spav. Um, talking about a BCS Bowl, but how – at least in this location, talking about it's going to be in the playoff format next season. How big is it to, to play well, especially in a location that, that is going to host one of those games? Definitely. It, uh, you know, this is my first time uh, going into the Georgia Dome. Um, it, it's a great venue, and you, you can see why that it's going to be in one of those top games to compete with the national championship. And, and it, it, it's definitely uh, 
something that we, we have to take very seriously. And in this, this game, uh, it's the only game on national TV at night. And it's a, it's a great recruiting tool for us, too. And if we go out there and execute what we do and come out with the victory, that's going to spark us into spring and into recruiting. And uh, just playing at this stage is very important to us for We're very important to have success here. All right, where are we going next, guys? All right, right here in the corner. Yeah, Johnny, could you just talk about your ability to elude the escape pressure, and how did you kind of develop that skill? Yeah, it was just something that uh, I guess just kind of came natural whenever I played football in middle school, football in high school. Um, just being able to, to improvise and extend some plays, um, try and keep them alive, and, and really move the chains and, and get first downs and score touchdowns is, uh, is the main goal. So. Um, try and continue to fight for these guys and, and extend the play and make things happen. All right, over here in the middle left. Uh, for any of the players, does uh, Duke remind uh, you all of uh, kind of yourselves last year? Um, maybe a little bit. Um, we obviously, I mean, we had a big signature win uh, last year towards the end of the year. Um, but you, you look at what they did with the win streak and, and how we had a little bit of a run there going towards the end of the year. Um, I remember how, how we felt going into the Cotton Bowl and the momentum and the confidence that we have. So I'm sure they, <clears throat> I'm sure they share some of that as well. Uh, for Jake and Johnny, have you guys been able to pinpoint what went wrong with the offense in the last two games? Besides you being banged up, were, were you not getting enough people involved? What were really the issues there? I think confidence. If I'm, if I'm going to really pinpoint one thing, I would say just um, that, that would probably be the main thing. We weren't playing. Um, with really the swagger, playing with the the juice and the energy that we that we needed to be. Um, you go into the Auburn game and, and and how that turned out, and that that game is is really deflating. Um, and the more and more you look at it, the more and more me and Spav met the next day and talked the next day. It was one that that stung for for a long time, um, especially offensively. So um, just going from that from that game and kind of transitioning to some of the other ones and some non-conference games thrown in there. Um, we just kind of lost our confidence after that and, and never really could get it back. So um, I feel like we've had a great week of bowl practice, and it's, we've continued to progress, especially since we've been here um, in Atlanta. So I'm, I'm very excited, um, I'm very confident in, in these guys, and I think we're all ready to go. Yeah, I'm good on that. You answered that well. <laughs> <laughs> OK, right here. Mark Deshaun Hall is a guy that definitely continue to progress as the season went along, had a nice little run there at the end. What have you seen from him in bowl preparations? Do you feel like he's a guy that could have a, a breakout game? Well, game? I hope so. I mean, Day Day is getting better, just like all those young guys are. I mean, and that's as you watch the season unfold down the stretch here, you know, I felt like we've gotten better and the confidence is coming uh, with our group. Um, and Day Day's definitely part of that. Um, still young, first bowl experience for a lot of these guys. So um, it'll be another chapter in our lives uh, in this season. Um, hopefully the, the uh, last one for those young guys as a new experience. All right. Johnny, it seemed to kind of go against every bit of your competitive fiber, whatever you want to call it. When How difficult <coughs> was it to teach yourself to slide, to get out of bounds, to do the things that they, everyone had said you needed to work on in the offseason to become a better complete quarterback? Yeah, well, I mean, I want to play the whole game. I don't want to get blindsided or, or take a shot kind of like I did in the Auburn game that was – um, could have been avoided. So as, as hard it is in that instance in such a quick second to, to make that decision, um, you, sometimes you just have to chalk it up and, and, and get down. And I needed to do that a little bit more. Um, but I, I think that you, you look in the NFL and you look at some of the greatest guys that do it. I mean, they, they you know when to pick your battles. Um, so I'm still learning how to do that and hopefully can try and perfect that. All right, back row. Jake, as you guys look to get that swagger and the confidence back, how important and, and how key can a quick start be, kind of like what we saw a lot last year with, with coming out and making that statement early? Definitely, that's huge. And, that, and that's main, one of the main emphasis that we do as an offense is the fast start. And uh, it's, it's going to be very important to get a lot of people involved early in the game and focus on getting first downs, and hopefully that will lead into touchdowns. But those first few drives of the game are very important to set the tone up. All right, over here on the right. Johnny, you talked about the, the sliding and learning to do that. Someone mentioned yesterday that it was a little bit funny because last year you didn't do that, but you weren't hurt. This year you did do it and did get hurt. Was that a little frustrating for you that you worked on those things but still end up banged up? 
I haven't really thought about it too much like that. I mean, I ran the ball, I feel like, a lot more last year, um, but was able to really um, get down and avoid quite a bit of those and never really took all that many shots. And this year's kind of, that's just been how it's been. Maybe people are, are out to get me and want to really um, rip my head off, but um, I haven't really paid too much attention to it. Okay, back for, the back. For this one's for Johnny and Jake. But two years ago when you joined the SEC, would you ever imagine the program having so much success to start off with in the conference? Say that again. Oh, sorry. Uh, that's two years in the SEC. Uh, did you, two years ago, when you joined the Southeastern Conference, would you ever imagine the Aggies having so much success early on? No, it uh, with with the hiring of Coach Sumlin, uh, he he's very good at uh, at motivation and getting these kids to play at a high level. Um, I, I wasn't a part of the part of it last year, and I got to come in for the second year, and just. Uh, you know, I, I, I've been at programs that played Texas A&M when I was at Oklahoma State in 2010. And, and just to see the excitement uh, that this program and this university has on the success that they had after one year in the SEC has been huge. And, you know, uh, just with uh, the people that Coach Sumlin has put them around and, and the fan base and the support, uh, it, it doesn't surprise me at all that the success that they're having in the SEC. Was that, was that for Johnny as well or just – yeah, I, I wasn't um, all that surprised about it. I mean, last year um, we were excited um, and, and we felt like we let some games slip away the year before um, in the second half. So um, we were we were pumped up. Um, it was talked about being the best conference in, in the country and um, and we were eager to, to get in there and see see how we stacked up. But Coach Sumlin brought a great deal of energy and, and really gets the most out of us. All right, back to back. Shazer, can you talk a little bit about uh, how important it would be for this team to, to make it three straight bowl wins in three straight years? Uh, it'd be very important. You know, the, the last game of the season is the first game of the next year. So we want to start off next year with a win under our belt. You know, we haven't finished the last couple of games the way we wanted to. So finishing this bowl game strong would be the way we want to go out. And, you know, just being able to participate in this bowl game is, is beneficial for our team, you know, to – for the confidence level of going into next year. And, you know, we, we just want to finish strong as a team. Uh, we're back here in the back again. Uh, this one's for Johnny. Uh, can you talk about the difference of this year not winning the Heisman Trophy and maybe the pressure being alleviated from you going into this bowl game compared to last year when you did win it going into the Cotton Bowl? I didn't really feel much pressure going into the Cotton Bowl um, last year. Uh, it was kind of in the same. Uh, way that I am right now, I was really eager to play and, and eager to get back on the field. And I think um, being a competitor uh, this time that we have off um, from end of November to pretty much January 1st, the, the new year, um, it's a lot of time of not getting out there on the football field and, and playing um, playing against another opponent. So we, we've seen a lot of these guys in practice. I'm really tired of going against him. Um, he's been throwing everything in the world at us in practice. So. Um, Tired of that and ready to ready to get back on the field in the Georgia Dome, which is a, a great venue. Yeah, we're going next, guy. Right, all the way in back. Johnny, can you talk about? I mean, you mentioned it having those play calls right there next to you. Are you excited though to get that tempo up and to get it back to where, like we saw it last year, where it was quick? You're getting it and and you know causing issues that way. Yeah, my biggest thing is uh, I want to get out and, and if we're going to come out and throw the ball early. Um, get some completions and get a rhythm going, and I think everything comes from there. Uh, you look at some of our games earlier in the year, you start out a drive 10 for 10 or 5 for 6, 5 for 7, and you get some, some easy completions. You, you, you're just playing pitch and catch, and you get to see the ball completed, and um, it, it really gets your confidence up and gets you rolling. And from there, we can really get some first downs, take it step by step, and, and do what we want to do. All right, over here on the left. Johnny, this was the time last year when things started just really changing for you after the Heisman. Are you able to just, and you just mentioned how things have kind of mellowed out in College Station at this time. Are you able to just kind of sum up the past year and what it's been like for you since this was the time of year it really got cranking for you on that front? Absolutely not. There's too, there's so much that's gone on in between um, last year at this point and, and now. Um, I feel like every week there's there's almost been something. Um, so it's, been a, it's been a little bit of a journey, but um, I feel like I'm a lot better at handling it now than I was last year at this point. Um, still still no regrets or, or anything in that regard. I'm happy and content with where I'm at right now. All right, now let's go right here in the middle. Samantha. 
I guess this is uh, for Coach Spav and uh, Johnny, but the last two games of the year, you know, we were in the rain at LSU and in Missouri it was really cold. Um, this will be indoors. Do you think playing indoors will help, you know, bring the offense back a little bit better and talk about how the weather might have affected the last two games? Uh, you know, that, but that's just football, just uh, part of the, uh, uh, the conditions that you play in. You know, obviously we're going to be playing in a, a dome, so I don't think there's going to be any wind hopefully in here. But uh, it, uh, it's going to be a, a good atmosphere. It's a very fast playing field, and um, I, I, I enjoy that because I like to see our kids trying to play as fast as they can. But um, there's not going to be any weather conditions out there, so uh, I, I think we, we don't have any excuses going into the game for that, so we can go out there and just leave it, out, leave it all on the line. Yeah, I mean, the Georgia Dome, the turf feels really fast. Um, uh, we've, we've had fun, and, and we look good out there um, running around the past couple of days on there. Um, so I, I think we're really excited about playing in that venue and uh, getting to play in a, in, a, in a dome two years in a row, Cowboy Stadium last year, and then um, this venue here um, should be good. Johnny, how exciting is it for the Aggies? I know that Duke drove here, but for you guys to be in SEC country and to be playing in an SEC venue and to have the Aggie faithful that's going to turn out for that ball game Tuesday night. I'm really excited. Um, I think one of the best things about A&M is whatever bowl game we would be playing, I think we travel um, extremely well. Um, our fans are, are, are really passionate, and I think they're really excited about this game. Um, like Coach Pass said earlier, it's a, I mean, even on TV, there's going to be tons of people that watch us it's on New Year's Eve, the the only game on on television. So, um, I, I think I speak for for me and DeShazer and, and everyone involved with the team. We're really excited and um, really glad that we get the support from from our fan base that we do. All right, got time for a couple more. Where are we going to go next? All right, back here. DeShazer. Johnny's talking about confidence. Are you seeing that confidence from that offense of them kind of getting back to their their old ways a little bit, I guess? Uh, yes. You know, you can see it from all the receivers, which I go against daily, you know. I mean, I, I don't go against the offense line too much. I try to stay out of there. But, you know, uh, the receivers are definitely, you know, they're coming out, they're running their routes, they're, they're catching the ball with confidence. You don't see too many drop balls out there. You know, Johnny throwing it on point, and, you know, we're just out there competing every day, and the offense is definitely getting their swag back. This one's for Johnny. Um, if and when your last game as an Aggie is, what do you want your legacy to be after you've left Texas A&M? Yeah, I just want to be remembered as, as one of the best to, to have played um, at A&M. I, mean, I, I definitely don't like coming in second or, or being second best at, at anything. So um, hopefully um, with the things that, that we've done here as a team, um, Hopefully get this third <clears throat> third bowl win, um, a big win in the Cotton Bowl against a, a former Big 12 opponent, a Heisman Trophy. Uh, we have an Outland Award winner. We have four finalists going to um, Orlando this year. So, I mean, as far as a team, uh, these past two, three years that I've been here have uh, been awesome. So, uh, I think three bowl, three bowl wins um, of what we did last year as a team um, in the Cotton Bowl and, and with the Heisman. Um, I just want to be remembered as, as, as one of the best. OK, right up here. Jake, you, you came in and inherited the Heisman Trophy win winner. And I know you and Cliff are friends. But can you just describe maybe the relationship that you have been able to build with Johnny in this past season? You know, it, the way I learned from Cliff and on how you handle the quarterbacks, and, and you, you've got to be very close with them because you know, it, Cliff always told me that, you know, if a kid goes out there and he throws an interception, you know, everybody in the entire stadium knows he screws up. So, you know, that, that's something that uh, the relationship that you build, the, the quarterbacks are, are very, very close uh, because, uh, you know, we can't call perfect plays all the time and we rely on him to get us in the right place. So, you know, we work together on it and, you know, it's uh, the working with Johnny's been great. Um, I, I've been pretty fortunate to to come in already with it inherited and it it, it been taught by Cliff and uh, I just pretty much uh, spent the time developing a relationship with Johnny and figuring out what he does best and what he likes and and pretty much uh, those relationships will continue on forever. All right, time for one more. Who's got it? Okay, over here on the left. Johnny, Coach Sumlin had told you told us you had kind of a newfound freedom this year to check out a place. How often did you do that, and how much you, did you kind of enjoy that that newfound freedom this season? I, I just feel like um, at the beginning of this year, I was able to do what I was doing 
probably game eight or, or nine of last year. So got more familiar last year with getting us into the right play and, and really being able to do um, all of the freedom more towards the end of last year and, and just being able to have that at the beginning of this year um, was nice. So I, I don't know if we did it more. I'm, I'm sure we did it more this year just because I was able to check and, and do things like that more um, in more games. But um, I don't feel like um, it was too different. I feel like Coach, Coach McKinney and um, Spav, between the two of them, um, got us into some, some pretty good plays this year. And, and if there was something I didn't like or a blitz or a bad look or something that we had looked on film and saw that we didn't like, then I would check us out a bit. But uh, I don't think it was um, much, much different than, than how um, I would operate the offense last year.